let's continue talking about the iris. The iris is like the ones that we have obviously on our eyes. When you squint your eyes, less light goes in. So obviously whoever invented the camera copy our eyes, okay? So it closes the, the, the iris and less light goes in. The more, the more you open it, more light goes in, right? So those are some metal blades that actually close and open. I just said that. Expands or contract. Controls light that reaches back lens target or the camera operates like a human eye. Iris increase, blocks light. Iris contracts, light passes through. Okay, um, whenever that we need more light, we can actually manipulate that in manual mode, especially on these cameras, okay? Especially on these cameras. It can be done on the small cameras as well, but it's a little more complicated on the menu you have to go to. So, but on this camera, it's easy to set it up in, in our manual, and we uh, work the iris as is needed. Not necessarily as really I wanted to, but simple as it needs to be uh, done, so you don't want a dark image at that point, okay? So, um, there are, like I mentioned a few seconds ago, <coughs> uh, an auto iris and or, and it says auto iris circuitry, and, and what it controls, control the size of the iris automatically, uh, depending the amount of light that is available um, at the environment, in that room, or especially is outdoors. Iris and apertures. Take a look at this very well, please, okay? As you can see, a small iris means it's open, okay? And it's a large aperture, okay? So the, the F18 right here, uh, the opening through which light passes adjusts by the iris. The large aperture is smaller number, so uh, more light will go in. Less, and it's closed, obviously. The larger the number uh, on the aperture, the small is the paint hole, so to speak, uh, on the iris itself. So um, in order for me to have best, the best pictures possible, I gotta have a lens that is capable of the, the, the smallest F stop possible, okay? Now we can see it on the lens of the camera. The F stop sign is on the lens, which indicates size of iris, Iris size control aperture, which control light. So this right here is that, this one right here is the F stop number, while this ring right here will control the iris itself. And by the way, every camera will be different, okay? How is it that we will go to these controls? Most likely, these controls like that will be seen uh, in Commercial, I mean, commercial or professional cameras as this Sony right here. F-stops, uh, relationship F-stops control iris size. Iris size controls aperture with control light. Fast lenses, uh, fast lens uh, that produces large aperture and lens strong light into camera, lower F-stop numbers. A slow lens, that produces small aperture and less light, little light and camera higher to f stops. All right, shutter speed. Shutter is very, very cool thing to understand, okay? Um, this right here, this big number right here, one of a 8,000 is a 8,000 of a second. That means it's super fast. Okay, there are, there are cameras that can go a super high number in here. This is 8,000 over a second. And 
when is it that I need such a speed of the shutter? Okay, um, especially this speed right here, one eight of a second, or perhaps if I set my shutter speed to, uh, let's say, 1200 of a second, uh, if the camera, the camera is capable of, I can take pictures with nature. For example, if I want to, uh, if I want to just freeze a frame of a butterfly and it's flying and it's approaching to a flower, for example, but I want to just leave uh, that, those wings just frozen right on the screen. Okay, that is when I need a higher, uh, a higher of a sec number. But we need to keep in mind that whenever that we want to take those type of pictures, we need a lot of light. Okay, so um, higher shutter speed allows clearer images. So if I, if I can have the video camera in a higher uh, uh, sec number, the image will be clear, more detail. The colors will be so precise that the grade of those colors will be so precisely uh, on the image when we press the shutter. One thing is important to understand as well is that when we take a picture with our telephones, okay, and we change the speed, which by the way, you can do that on your phone, okay, on your camera. Uh, you can actually um, put this, the, the shutter speed all the way to, I believe it's 12,000, but like I said, you need a lot of light. So. When I press to take the picture on a phone, it freezes the frame. But keep in mind, if you go a higher number, well, this number right here is so high, I'm going to need a tripod, most likely, to take a picture and just freeze it like I really want that to just freeze. If uh, another example would be, a snow is, a snow is just, uh, coming down and you want to take pictures of the snowflakes on the snow would be nice because it's a lot of white outside already so it's a lot of light so you put the higher at sec of speed do at least 12 uh, let's go 1200 or 1500 okay of a second and when you take the picture you press the the shooter on your phone most likely will freeze the frame Okay, so, uh, and we'll have a beautiful a snowflake right on the, on the screen. So, uh, it's excellent for shooting uh, a sport as well. So, if we're going to be taking the pictures of a, a basketball game, football game, or whatever the sport it is, and you just want to just freeze that frame of putting the, that ball into a basket in basketball, and you just want to freeze that frame, that number is quite high to do it, very high. But you can go between 1200, 1500, and, and you need light, like I just mentioned, okay? Now, something that, um, uh, that, I don't, that I would like to just bring, and which is not here as well, is uh, a um, feature is called ISO. Uh, you're going to find that on your camera, on your phone, you'll find the ISO. Uh, and what it, ha what it does is the phone itself and it give you an extra boost for, um, let's call it virtual light. It will increase the exposure on it more on, on, that, on the camera, but there is a risk. Okay, we can go from uh, 20 ISO to most likely cameras, professional cameras will have 10,000 or 16,000 ISO. So, but when we increase the ISO number, we are risking for that picture to become uh, grainy. So we have to be very careful when we use the ISO feature when taking pictures, okay? so. Um, the shutter speed with the ISO go hand by hand when, whenever you want to take a, a good and clear image. All right, let's move on. 
handheld shooting. Okay, uh, this is a very cool part. I, you know, and uh, personally, I love taking video handheld. Okay, because I I believe I have a stability. I, I do believe that I still have my stamina in place, so I can hold a good shot. Okay, uh, first of all, um, tips. Always, you're going to be handheld, you keep your legs separate, spread out the, your feet in an angle. Uh, your left will be at the 11 o'clock, at the 10 o'clock, and your right will be at 2 o'clock. So please take a look at the handles, the little hands on the clock, if you so, okay? So you can, will put your feet like this. Balance. And then, let me get this camera out of this tripod. And then handheld, uh, two ways to do it. Here with the grip, and always keep your hand right here, okay? Here. I do prefer, I prefer here, the handle. And by the way, it's a record convenient button right here, and a zoom. So I, I prefer doing it here, okay? And then I just move, if I do my motion, I will do an up, okay, down shot, and so forth. But if I'm going to be, a, if someone there, and that is my object, my subject, I'm going to just do here, okay? And against my, I, against right here, my, my left hand on the bottom, and my right hand on the handle of the camera and keep it there, okay? So that is handheld shooting. Tips <clears throat> as well, lean against anything you can find around you, a wall, um, a table, or a, uh, something that is solid, obviously, that you're gonna be able to lean, lean on. Uh, when you are shooting uh, outdoors, don't lean on cars. No, especially that would be my Ferrari. No, don't do it. So uh, consumer cameras are uh, easy to hold. Well, not really necessarily because consumer cameras are so small, they are very, very easy and prone to shake or move. So we need to be very careful that we practice the way we, we extend with our legs, you know, you know kind of open on these degrees for a better a steady uh, position, okay? But I do prefer large cameras because the, heavy, the heavier the camera, the more a stable shot you're gonna have. Believe me, is, that is, is uh, something that I experienced and it works very well. Little tiny baby cameras, no, no, no much. Uh, so, <clears throat> those are the, the tips. Uh, and uh, as you can see her right here, she's leaning in, in the car, but it's a, the door is open. Uh, obviously, assuming that that's her car, right? It's not somebody else's car. This guy is leaning on the wall. Or... Uh, we can use a, a, a uh, body mount. This is a steady cam. This, this apparatus here is called a steady cam. We have one in here. Most likely one day we want to use it. Okay, I'm going to show you how, how that thing is used. It's very, very cool. We use it many times at uh, the football games. Tripod shooting. That's easy, tripod. Okay, uh, we already talked about the tripod here, right? But I'm going to go very quickly. Legs head, handle, and by the way, <clears throat> I have a dolly on this tripod. So easy to roll, especially when we have a hardwood floors, um, anything that is solid, easy to just roll, okay? Uh, trucking forward, trucking backwards, uh, um, that is using a tripod on a dolly. Uh, remember, studio cameras don't call tripods. They call pedestals. This is the column here. It is not seen, 
is a different type of tripod, by the way. Okay, <coughs> uh, tripod head. Uh, tripod head. Uh, this is a heavier and and commercial tripod. Okay, uh, I don't think that we have any here, but this is a professional camera. Uh, very quickly, uh, tripod head. Okay, legs. Uh, camera head. Lens. Viewfinder. Uh, zoom and uh, and focus control are on this handle and is operated by a, uh, uh, a cable of friction. And those are the real lens uh, controllers. Um, we have those at uh, the stadium. I'm planning to actually get um, at least one of these uh, for this camera right here. It can be utilized with this camera right here. Okay. So remember the uh, loading the, uh, the tripod <clears throat> the camera into a tripod, it can be from either uh, side. Uh, you can go from the back, and you have to press the red button here in order to lock in. And then it needs to just tight this. And then make sure you lock the tilt so the camera doesn't go forward. Because if the camera is quite heavy and this thing goes forward, it can just uh, tilt the entire tripod and the camera can be just break. Uh, friction heads, friction, this is a friction head right here. Okay, friction is that it, the two, the two um, parts of the tripod as frictioning themselves. That's how it works. Those mostly are consumer tripods, friction. Uh, fluid head, they have actually oil loaded and they have is, is springs, so um, the ones that we have at the studio are, are fluid ones, and they are better, and um, the, they are very smooth when panning or tilting down or up, because the oil uh, mechanism that they have right on the tripod head. So they are friction, and we have uh, fluid heads. We already talked about monopods. And sliders, I think we have one somewhere in here. I haven't got the, uh, how we can apply it, not yet. Jib, probably you saw the one that we have in the studio. Okay, we have one, it's called Jib, uh, Giraffe, uh, we, many other crazy names, Crane. You know, Crane is whenever it's a large one, okay? I had the opportunity of actually operating one and it was 28 feet long. Very fun. Oh, that is awesome too, especially when uh, filming or recording uh, musical concerts. Uh, lens cleaning, very important to just do a lens cleaning. And we don't gonna use, uh, we don't gonna use actually almost anything to clean the lens. This is especially to clean the lens, okay? So we go and in a circular mode, okay, we go from outside, inside, or inside, outside, okay? And that's how we clean a lens of a camera. We don't use no liquids, no anything there, just this. Ask me for help and you need to do so. Um, okay, whenever that we are not close to the camera, uh, um, uh, that we stop recording for whatever reason, okay? Always make sure that you lock the camera, the tilt especially, the panning, <coughs> the panning uh, the head it needs to be locked. I, the, the casters, they're, they're locked as well. So you press this and they just lock. Very important, do not leave a camera unattended. It's a risk. I'm flying. Uh, after using the camera, it's very important that we have to get the battery out, okay, to charge, okay? Uh, I, I will show you uh, um, where is it that those, those batteries are charged. We need to cover the lens. If we have the cover of the lens, uh, we need to make sure that we put that one in. Uh, this one doesn't have a uh, cover, uh, so um, we need to find out where that is. Uh, we're gonna power 
down the camera, we shut it down, uh, especially when using batteries. Uh, we wanna, uh, when we're done, we wanna actually detach the camera from the tripod and we store the cameras in place, okay? Um, and we're gonna secure the camera. We don't have a cases, but we have a rack where those cameras go. All right.